Hello, this is Domenico Composto, and we're going to do another video on perfectly competitive market structures. We're going to look at another scenario, which I'll call scenario number three, and to apply a real-world example uh, to this scenario, we're going to look at the 1973 oil crisis. Here we have the Wikipedia page detailing um, this, and uh, in 1973 we had OPEC, the Organization for Petroleum Exporting Countries, um, proclaiming oil embargo and retaliation against those nations that they perceived as supporting Israel during the Yom Kippur War. So this was a type of kind of economic warfare that they were engaging in, and they collectively decided to restrict the global supply of oil to raise price. So the price increased from $3 a barrel to about $12 a barrel, which was a 300% increase. And we can see that on this timeline. Here's 1973, price of oil fairly stable. And then there's a sudden jump in 1973 as a result of this oil crisis. And another jump in 1979, and ultimately the price of oil collapses. So this um, economic model will help us understand what happened during that time period from 1973 to the 1980s. Why did the price rise? dramatically and why did it ultimately crash. So let's go ahead and uh, illustrate this. So let's just make a note that we're going to be looking at a third, a third scenario. Let me just get rid of that. You're looking at a third scenario. And in this scenario, we're going to be illustrating a firm an oil extracting firm starting at normal profit prior to the oil crisis of 1973, and then going to super normal profit as a result of the sudden increase in the price of oil from three to $12 a barrel to eventually going down to normal profit by the 1980s. So that's what we'll be illustrating. And this will be a result of a decrease in the global supply within the industry, which will ultimately lead to an increase in the global supply by the 1980s. So let's uh, uh, write down what market we're looking at. We're looking at the global market. For petroleum however you're looking at this period from about 19 the 1970s going to the 1980s okay from 1970s to the 1980s that's the time period so let's gonna well, let's uh, label our axes on the x-axis we're measuring quantity the dependent variable in this case with this economic model quantity of uh, oil being supplied and demanded, and the independent variable being price on the y-axis for the industry. We'll uh, label that. Here we're looking at the global industry for petroleum, and here we're looking at the individual oil extracting firm. And we're looking at the price, we're measuring the price, the costs, and the revenue being generated by the firm. So here we have a upward sloping supply curve, global supply curve for oil, according to the law of supply, a downward sloping demand curve, according to the law of demand, and where D1 equals S1, it sets an equilibrium quantity supplied and demanded in the free market at Q1, and the equilibrium price in the free market at P1, okay? So that is going to be our point A. And point A establishes the price that the individual oil extracting firm must accept at P1. And it's this perfectly elastic price where P1 equals AR1, which equals MR1, marginal revenue one. And demand um, average revenue is our demand curve which is equal to our marginal benefit, okay? 
So firms, as you would have studied in class in this industry, are price takers because there are millions of, um, uh, of these firms. But in this case, with the oil industry, perhaps not millions, but maybe several hundreds of uh, oil extracting firms worldwide. And they're producing a homogeneous product, petroleum, which is, uh, can't be really differentiated from petroleum um, from another industry, whether it's extracted from Venezuela or Nigeria, we'll just assume that it's basically the same. So let's uh, label the, and draw and label the curves for the firm. The firm has an upward sloping supply curve, S1, which is equal to the marginal cost curve. And they have their average total cost curve intersecting with MC, MC intersecting with ATC at its lowest point. We assume that the firm here is producing at point A. Now we're going to remember that we're assuming profit maximization. Pi is the symbol for profit. Profit max is achieved by the rule of producing where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Here profits are at their highest or at maximum. And here we see the marginal revenue equaling the marginal cost at point A, which sets the equilibrium quantity being supplied by the individual oil extracting firm at Q1. So this is our starting point, okay? The supply and demand of the industry sets the perfectly elastic demand curve and price that the firm will accept. They'll produce where MR equals MC, which is at point A, setting quantity supplied at Q1. And we're gonna also notice that the average revenue is equal to the average total cost at this point. So the firm is generating normal profit. AR at point A is equal to ATC. So the firm is generating what we call normal profit. So what happens? 1973, the oil shock. Uh, OPEC as a colluding oligopoly collectively decides to restrict the global supply from S1 to S2. That sets a nuclear room quantity supply and demand it at, whoop, at Q2 with a new equilibrium price set at P2. So this becomes the price, and we're at point B. This becomes the price that the individual oil extracting firm must accept at P2, and it's perfectly elastic, so it comes across. And we'll label P2 is equal to AR2, our average revenue two, which is equal to our marginal revenue two, equals demand two, which equals marginal benefit two. So the firm's gonna profit maximize where MR, is MR equals MC. So we're gonna increase the quantity supplied until that intersection at point B. And here we see quantity supplied increasing to Q2. Now let's take a look at the level of profit. So here at point B, the firm's average revenue is at that point. And at quantity two, we see the average total costs are right here. So here is costs two, or P2, which is our average revenue two, is greater than the average total costs of the firm. So this yellow rectangle that I'm outlining, this yellow rectangle is the super normal profit, pi being the symbol for profit in economics. And I'm gonna go ahead and kind of color that in so we can see, shade it in, but this is all abnormal or super normal profit for the firm. So what happens? If uh, petroleum extracting firms are generating super normal profit, times are good, uh, oil is now trading from three to $12 a barrel. Uh, that's a 300% increase in price. This industry has a uh, inelastic demand curve. So as price rises, total revenue for the firm is increasing. So these oil extracting firms are doing very, very well. And this wakes up competition. Other oil extracting firms that perhaps had 
average total costs were slightly too high at the price of P1, now see the price rise to a point that is above their average total cost so they can begin to enter this industry. We assume in this uh, market structure that resources can be easily mobilized and that the barriers to entry are low or do not exist. So firms begin to come into the petroleum industry, 1974, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79. And as they collectively begin to join the oil industry, they're beginning to increase the supply, the global supply of oil. So over time, in the mid to late 1970s, until we get to the 1980s, there's an increasing number of petroleum extracting firms entering, which is increasing the global supply from S2 to S1. S1 equals D1, which lowers the price of uh, petroleum from P2 back to P1, and for firms, this is bad news because the price has fallen. They're going to have to accept that price. And so they're going to have to decrease the quantity supplied from Q2 to Q1. And once they go back to Q1, they're back at normal profit where AR is equal to ATC, ATC at this point. So that is an illustration of that period in time where we see um, the firm starting at normal profit, going to normal profit, and super normal profit, and going back to normal profit. So that is a step-by-step -step, uh, way to graph this model. Now let's analyze it as you would on a paper one. On a paper one exam, we would analyze it like this. So as can be seen, we have two graphs, one for the industry, one for the firm. We're measuring quantity on the x-axis, and for the industry, we're measuring price and for the firm, we're measure, measuring price costs and revenue. For the industry, we have an upward sloping supply curve labeled S1, and we have a downward sloping demand curve labeled D1. In the, uh, the graph for the firm, we have an upward sloping supply curve labeled S1, which is equal to our marginal cost curve, and we see that it intersects with the ATC curve at its lowest point, which is productive efficiency. Minimum ATC is productive efficiency. So the industry where S1 equals D1 establishes an equilibrium quantity supplied and demanded at point A at quantity Q1, establishing a free market equilibrium price at P1, which becomes the perfectly elastic price that the individual firm must accept. So that we see that P1 equals average revenue one, which equals marginal revenue one equals to the demand curve, which is equal to the marginal benefit. Assuming profit maximization, where MR equals MC, the firm produces at point A with a quantity supplied at Q1. And at this point, we see that AR equals ATC, so they're generating normal profit. Then in 1973, OPEC, uh, this oligopoly, this colluding oligopoly or cartel, collectively decides to reduce the global supply of oil. And they do so from S1 to S2. All right, so it's initially going from S1 to S2. And S2 equals D1 in the industry at point B, establishing a quantity supplied and demanded at Q2, raising price from P1 to P2. So price rises initially from P1 to P2. That becomes the new perfectly elastic price that the firm must accept at P2, where P2 equals AR2, which equals MR2, which equals demand2, which equals marginal benefit2. Assuming profit maxim maximization, the firm will increase the quantity supplied along their supply curve from uh, increasing quantity supply from Q1 to Q2 or from point A to point B. And we notice that at point B, that the average revenue or price P2 equal to AR2 is greater than the average total costs, ATC or C2. So since AR is greater than ATC at quantity two, the individual oil extracting firm is generating super normal profit, which is the shaded area that we see here. As a result of individual firms generating super normal profit, this wakes up competition. This attracts more competing oil extracting firms into the industry. And over the years, more and more firms enter the industry. And so the supply increases from S2 back to S1, which leads to a decrease in price. So where S1 now equals D1, it sets a new equilibrium price at P1, 
So price has fallen from P2 back to P1, and quantity supply and demand has increased from Q2 to Q1 at point A. That establishes the perfectly elastic price that the individual firm must accept at P1. And following profit maximization, the firm will decrease the quantity supplied from point B to A or from quantity 2 to quantity 1. And at point A, we notice that the firm is back to generating normal profit because AR equals ATC. So that's the analysis. And in your evaluation, you will want to highlight uh, the productive and allocative efficiencies of this market structure. So we're going to remember that the industry is always allocatively efficient since demand equals marginal benefit and supply equals marginal cost. Um, supply or MC equals MB at point A and also equals uh, MC also equals MB at point B. So the industry is always allocatively efficient. All right. And the rule is producing it where MB equals MC or um, yes. So with the firm, uh, the firm we also notice is allocatively efficient regardless of the quantity of output. At point A, we see that the marginal benefit is equal to the marginal cost. So at point A, it's allocatively efficient. And at point B, again, the marginal benefit is equal to the marginal cost. So the firm is also allocatively efficient. Just a quick note there. Okay. But what about productive efficiency? Productive efficiency is producing at minimum ATC. So another note, productive efficiency is producing at minimum, minimum ATC. And that only occurs at point A. At point A, where the MC curve intersects the ATC curve, that is minimum ATC. So only point A is productively efficient. When the firm increases production to point B, we see that the ATC curve is increasing to this point. So it is not productively efficient at quantity two, only productively efficient at quantity one. Right, so that's basically it. So we have graphed this perfectly competitive market structure with a decrease in global supply and then an increase in global supply. We have analyzed it as we would on a paper one, and I've just highlighted uh, in your evaluation your talking points for allocative and productive efficiency. Thank you so much.